background is something a little bit different. Um, I was a former professor of research and statistics with a specialty in sports psychology. Um, I am not a clinical psychologist. I'm not going to talk about your mother or analyze your problems. Um, what my perspective is, is, is how does our brain intersect with our ability to learn a skill, to practice a skill, and to perform, in our case, racing um, for, for most of us. Uh, and that aspect of it is something we don't always appreciate, but I think a lot of us this year have start seen how the, the space that we're in and the space that our head's in can really truly impact what it is we can do with our bodies and our sport. Um, you know, what are we going to do here together? Well, honestly, I need, I need your help in this because my experience of 2020 is not the same as Shane's and it's not the same as any of yours. So I'm going to be asking questions. Ideally, you're going to have something that you can write on and write with. Um, and I'm hoping that once we do a few of these reflections, you're willing to share some of your ideas because I think a lot of us get caught in this sort of Zoom appearance of the world, which is we are in our little boxes and we have our little environment um, and we forget that other people are either sharing our experiences, which can be incredibly helpful, or they're having different experiences that we can learn from or that we may not have thought of otherwise. And that can be really helpful too. The place we're going to start to look is 2020. It's important for us to look at 2020 because otherwise it's just going to drift into 2021 and we're never going to have really either learned anything or closed the book or taken our athleticism forward in any way. Um, does that make sense? Most part. The place I want to start tonight is I want to ask your experiences, and this is where I would have you kind of write some things down. Um, I'm, I'm going to choose to share my screen here just because it will give you a little something to look at as you're thinking, and that can be helpful. So where I want to start with your just reflection process is I want you to write down might be one thing, might be 10 things, but take a minute or two. And in terms of athlete or being an athlete and living an athletic lifestyle, 2020 was the worst year because, Let me just finish that sentence for me. All right, I'm going to pull you back together and, and Shane, if you would set them free a little bit and unmute. 2020 was the worst year for athlete and athletic lifestyle because why? I'll speak up. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um I'm Chris Coyle. I've met you before. Uh, oh, hi, hey, Chris. Yeah. Um, the time trial in February. Yeah. Um, nice to I see knew it. your name sounded familiar. Um, the 2020 was the worst year because uh, I I missed the the crew, my uh, cycling club. Um, I get a lot of positive energy from them. And lately, it's just been you know getting that energy from Zoom and texts and not riding on somebody else's wheel, and it's a real downer. They're not the same. Yeah. Can't can't lie. 
there's there's nothing I can do to change that either. It's like Pollyanna as I can be, it is different. And and that's something we're gonna have to think about and we're gonna have to talk about. Someone else wanna be brave? Yeah, uh, I'm Johannes. Hi. Hey, Johannes. Um, yeah, I think it was the worst year because there was nothing, no events to structure the year around. So no sportives, no cycling camps, no goals really to look forward and to prepare for. That made it pretty hard. Thank you. I think a lot of people felt that when, when what we normally would target and how we would normally frame out things like our motivation and our focus, they didn't exist. And that's something we're, we're going to keep addressing as we go through tonight. But that's a big thing because next year we're going to have to have a conversation about that as well. Yeah, I think the, the, the most disappointing thing in this area is the, the cancellations where you're, you're doing the training, you're excited about the event, and then everybody sends around, oh, have you seen you know, whatever, San Diego's canceled, blah, blah, blah whatever's canceled. And, and that, uh, like, we can make up goals, I think. We can make up reasons to train and and then, and, uh, but when you get the, when you get that really disappointing, sort of sad confirmation that reality is so different, that, that that's pretty impactful. I, I would agree with you very much. Uh, I would also add that, you know, I felt just incredibly isolated. You know, I think, you know, we have friends on Strava or Zwift and you see, even in Europe, you see people still doing some pretty amazing rides and at least in California, Northern California, part of it because of the, the smoke. And then of course, COVID-19, you know, you were kind of going it alone for the last six to nine months, you know, and with no end in sight. I think that's what also sort of wears you down, you know, when is this going to end? And, just looked at just looked at the smoke report again today. We've got some more fires, and it's you know. Oh, I'm so sorry you're out there. I've seen a couple friends and what they've had to go through, and it is it, it takes what was quarantine and moves it outdoors as well, mm -hmm. and that just blows. Mm -hmm. Jump in just for a second. Thank uh, you. I, I have a mixed response. So, not feeling safe to go out. Uh, it's scary, um, but and, and for me, missing the PMC where we would have been 6,000 riders together was huge, but I still, one of the ways I kept sane was to go outside and ride my bike. I mean, today it rained and I got scared. I didn't want to be in the hospital because I slipped in the rain, but mm -hmm. I made it home. Uh, the day before, I made it to the ocean and back, so... Uh, that's kind of keeping me sane for the other things I'm doing. And my wife just said that for her, it was a good year. She got back to some writing she really missed and, and she loved doing that. That's wonderful. And I'm actually going to have a, a, a place for that. I'm just starting with the, the dumpster fire and the, the things that have been mostly at the top of our heads. But I agree that there, there's mixed and, and that is something that I'm gonna bring into this. So thank you for bringing that up and, and already being ahead of me. Anybody else have some of these that, that were sitting in their head? I'll add one from the opposite end of the spectrum is feeling a little bit hopeless that I can't, uh, I can't change what is happening in terms of event cancellations uh, disappointments, um, borderline depression sometimes, not for myself, but for athletes that I've, I've dealt with. Um, feeling like I really can't help with that because, you know, events are changed and it's just a different kind of world we live in right now, unfortunately. Anybody else? What else are we missing here? Okay. A pretty good well, list. Oh, thank you, Jeff. From the uh, far end of the age uh, Stephen might be uh, as close as I am, but I'm pushing 80. And uh, the disappointment here was getting back on the bicycle and finding out that I'm not nearly as strong as the rest of you guys. And how hard it is to build the strength back up. 
whether you're riding with a group or not. And Shane was really instrumental in changing the curve. But, uh, you know, 2020 disappointing. Oh, yeah, I'm strong. And then you get out and do 30 miles and then hit the wall. Hmm. Yeah, no, I think that's that's real too. Is is just that little bit of time at the beginning of quarantine took away an awful lot for some of us, and the the ease of getting it back is not anything close to the ease of losing it. Right. This is a pretty comprehensive list. Twenty twenty was so I coach full time. Also, um, it was one of the hardest years I've ever seen in terms of continually having to manage my own disappointment and frustrations and sadness for what my athletes had lost, and at the same time manage how they're feeling in this context of a place where I actually had no ability to offer hope. Um, and, and I'll, I'll talk a bit more about that in, in a moment. But one of the things that I came to realize and one of the conversations that was, was something that came up in my training and my education that I had to pull out on myself here. And my poor athletes got it too. And now you're going to get it. Isn't this great? We just pass things along. It's so much fun. Um, I'm going to pull up... Another question, which is, of course, I'm in the wrong spot. What was your fault or your responsibility in this being the worst year possible that we have seen in terms of our athletic lifetime? And it's a harder question. And it's one that it's so easy to say, here is the world that we were offered. And here is the constant shutting down, cancellation, disappointment that was imposed upon us. Those are all real. And, and I, uh, I take nothing away from any of that. But what responsibility did you carry in this, this challenging component of it? Or did you? And I'll let you write. I won't necessarily ask you to share unless you're dying to, but I, I will share my experience in a moment. But think, think about what was your fault or your responsibility in this being the worst year we've seen for athletics in some time. While others are writing, uh, and I didn't introduce myself last time, Stephen Branson, but anyway, while others are writing, I'll just kick one in. I, Thanks. It's my fear of... of, of uh, just a fatalistic attitude, fear that the can't fix it. This is the end. I'm going to get sick and die. That that every morning negative attitude. That's why I said getting out on the bike helps. I I, I feel better, but I have this. That's what did I contribute? Is is the attitude? I'm still working on that attitude. I'm going to guess you're not the only one. That that's what I was going to share as well. My initial response. So I spent all of last year, well, 22 weeks of last year, but who's counting? Uh, in a boot from a. I fell down a step. I shattered a bone in my foot, and so last year was pity, you know, big fat pity party year for me. And 2020 was going to be my comeback. It was going to be my my return, my strength. And I was, forgive my language, a little bitch at the beginning of all of this because I could not get myself in the mindset of it has been stolen from me. It has been taken from me. I couldn't break that and I couldn't shift it. It took me quite some time till I asked myself this particular question. And, and Stephen, I appreciate what you said because... That's one of the things that I've seen in, in several of my athletes as well is just the, you know, how, how are we ever going to get past this? How are we ever going to have a moment? And what about my own piece in this? Because I, you know, we're in that age range where it can be a little bit more challenging to manage a, an illness that can create chronic problems, particularly for athletes. But I think it's also important to recognize that and, you know, and to realize, number one, you're not alone in that. 
by any stretch of the imagination, which is great just because it means we're all in the middle of the dumpster together. Um, but the other piece it re helps you realize is that it's a reasonable perspective right now. It's, it is not irrational and it's not, it's not a truly catastrophic black and white type of thinking. It's something that you have to be conscious of and cautious of and aware of except for the fact you can't stop living your life. And, and one of the ways I think that many of us have given up kind of in living our life is so much of our lives revolved around those events that got canceled and the, and the friends that we would see at them and the disappointments. And that's where we stopped. We, we forgot or we, we didn't know how or we were just mired in this mess where we forgot that there is another side. And as long as we're breathing, we're on it. And, and that's a really important fact and feature to kind of remember. Um, before I keep dominating here, it, does anybody else want to share something? This, this can be a, a fairly like complicated piece of work to say. So if you don't want to just tell me, you know, go jump. I got no problem with that because I do have something that comes next. So I'm happy to jump in. Thanks, Chris. Um, since everybody's being pretty honest about this, I've, I've been struggling with depression uh, this summer, spring and summer. And uh, it, it got to the point where I was just having a lot of trouble just getting out and doing stuff that I enjoy, like riding my bike. Mm -hmm. um, and, and fortunately, uh, I work for a great company. I, I wound up taking a short-term disability because of the mental health issue and uh, was able to kind of rededicate my 2020 to, to getting back into training. It worked great. And then 10 days ago, I fell off my bike and broke my femur. Oh. But, but the positivity that came out of the kind of focusing on, on my mental health back in August kind of carried through to the recovery part at post-surgery. And it's still with me. I, I, I still have some positivity going. It's tenuous, but um, I think it's paying dividends in the short amount of time that I've, I've been recovering so far. And I'm optimistic that it's going to continue uh, for the next, you know, two or three weeks until I get back on a bike. Damn, Chris, that's, that's impressive. Thank you for A, sharing that, but also thank you for taking the time away from your company to, to focus on your health. Yeah. It, it's, it, it's, a tribute to your company for that, but it's also a tribute to you for doing it. And, and it's something that I, I wish there wasn't as much of a challenge to get people to go and seek those resources because that the coping strategies, the, the time to focus on the present moment, the remembering what's controllable versus what isn't, those pieces help get through those, those darker moments. And, there's always another side to those darker moments. And breaking your femur is like a friggin' kick in the butt though, isn't it? It is. Like, like oh, you didn't get tested enough. Let's test you a little <laughs> more. Yeah. yeah. Um, powerful, like powerful message though, to, to notice that it has continued on. And it's, it's still gonna be a, you know, an ebb and a flow, but if you're going in the right direction, that's a huge win. Um, and it sounds like you already recognized what was some of your responsibility and found yes, a way to, to jump right on board of changing it. So impressive. I'll tell you, if, if, if I was 36, I don't know if I would have had the courage to go to my company and, and tell them I need a break. Uh, but at 56, I feel like there's nothing to lose and I come first. So. Yeah, and something to carry for all of us, too. Anybody else want to jump in on this one? Yeah. Thank you, Hannes. Uh, yeah, I would say my responsibility is also lack of motivation. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. getting on the trainer when Shane says four hours this weekend is not the same thing as going out on ten in Tenerife and just if he says four hours in Tenerife, I'm like only four hours. And you know, on the, <laughs> when it's on Swift, it's like four hours. You know, just 
so it's my fault not being able to just you know i mean watching a screen or watching your at least i didn't break my femur <laughs> that's the problem right i would say to chris i would say i'm sorry because the good thing this year is no injuries whatsoever you know on swift um so but yeah so the difficulty in getting motivated uh, because the, the you know the fun part of cycling goes away to a large yeah. extent when you're on a when you're on a train or on a roller. And and we're that's definitely something we're going to address because that's part of a conversation that Shane and I had and and it's it's an important conversation to have. We're going to kind of take a look at motivation and set up a few structures. We're not going to do any goal setting tonight but y'all got to start dreaming like, and we need to start to frame and con frame out some context. So it, it's dreams that can come true um, with a little bit of work, but it, it's, it's definitely a piece that's, that's hard when you don't see the reason for doing something, it can be really challenging to get your butt up to do it. And, and, you know, getting my, tail handed to me on Zwift isn't always as motivating as trying to chase somebody up or down a hill. And we, we need to have part of that conversation around how, how do we change that? Anybody else want to jump in here before I move on? I think there's some, there's something here about, um, like, I think most people are, are, especially athletes who have a lot of stamina, you know, and drive, have a lot of ability to deal with stressors, yeah. even multiple stressors. But this has been such an unprecedented sort of, there's one and then there's another one and then there's another one. And then, you know, at where I'm at, it's like, then let's sell the company while there are the fires, <laughs> you know, and you're just sort of like, dude, give me a break, man. Like, and, and, and in that, I don't think anybody is, I mean, we've all had our coping strategies, but I don't think anybody's been like, like what Chris did, like the, the courage that it would take to do what, what he did to say, like, this is just too much. Yeah. Like I have not had that courage, I have to admit. So for me, I think that the most difficult part of this situation has been like trying to do everything like I would always do and knowing that I have the capacity to do it and then actually finding out that, that, that there was some negative impact to actually doing that. And I actually kind of found out later that I, I broke myself there and then I got to here and it's like, ah, probably should have done more of what, what having that level of courage than just assuming I could power through like I usually do actually a really good place to kind of have a conversation right on that feature because it's an important feature and it's an important feature for thinking about how we're going to go forward next year. Um, as human beings, we have a, a total stress budget. My, my husband's a financial planner. He, he loves to talk about asset maps. Well, we also have stress maps and how our stresses are allotted is going to determine how much sort of free space or free energy we have to pursue the things we love, which is also a stressor. And we do have that endurance and we do have that, I can handle this mindset. And we, we do have all of those pieces of athleticism that are, oh, you're gonna hit me? Yeah, I'll hit back. All right, fine, we'll go again, we'll go again, we'll go again, until we can't. Having, I think one of the, and I'm going to jump to the next sort of idea, but I think one of the best things to come out of this year is that many of us have started to have a recognition to the, on the fact that sitting around doing our work is a stressor. And it's highlighted when we're sitting in our house, looking in our box, and, and recognizing that there are no distractions to make it palatable and, or, or easier or funny or all of those pieces that are part of that human interaction and human contact. And, and this is actually a really great thing for us as athletes because if we can now recognize that our work takes a piece of us 
And our family requires a piece of us. And our health demands that we sleep and maybe eat some vitamin rich foods and we'll feel better because of it. All of a sudden those three things start to balance in with our athletic stress budget. And, and that's an, it's a really interesting piece because when we allow it to, to keep breaking over us, we do get lost in it and we do just get overwhelmed by it. Um, I, so I live on the seacoast of New Hampshire. So I live on the other side of the state from where Shane lives. And we went swimming last week and Hurricane Teddy was off the coast and this was gonna be a great day out swimming. We get down to the, to the beach and there are nine to 12 foot breakers. And it's like, all right, well, we'll just, we'll go in and we'll just play. Most of the time when you have surf like that, it's predictable. There's a wave, there's a five second to eight second gap, there's a wave, there's a five second to eight second gap, there's a wave, you get a set of six, then you get two minutes or so when they reset, and then it happens again. There was no predictability to this. You were getting wave, wave, gap, wave, 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 gap. And to, that's so much uh, an example of what this year has been. And the only way that you can survive in an ocean like that is by really just focusing on getting through the wave that's right there in front of you, the most important one, the one that you can get through. Because there's a shit ton of stuff, pardon my language, there's a, there's a crap ton of stuff um, out there that we can't control in this year. And being able to start to sort through and recognize what is our responsibility, what is our something that we have control and our energies will change, that's a real important feature to going on to this next year. Because there's, there's so many things we can't change. Um, and, and frankly, they're changing around us all the time. But our, what is our role? How do we keep ourselves safe and moving, into, moving forward, moving into that next gap? That's a piece that we'll look at when we get down the road just a moment here. I, I would say that's one of the best things to come out of 2020. I'm going to change this just a little bit and shift this a little bit and before kind of going to there. Everybody in here has talked about athletic or challenge or being able to be active. All of those pieces are really meaningful to me. How are they meaningful to you? And, and this is something I want you to write down. What does it mean to you to be athletic, to be an athlete? Because this to me is the critical question for how we move forward into that dreaming and that setup for 2021. What does it mean to you to be an athlete or to be athletic, to lead an athletic lifestyle? here if I can. Not gonna let me. So good. That's okay. We'll just let that go. No problem. What does it mean to be an athlete? Longevity. Longevity. Fighting off, fighting off old age. Hmm. So longevity. 
What else? I think I, I'll, I'll add um, pain and emotion management. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be, being able to tolerate that discomfort. Mm -hmm. 100%. I agree. I think of it as, as being a um, sort of a, a student of my own performance. Like I love a, that. Having a, I, I didn't make that up. So I read that somewhere that the, the, the idea that you're sort of, you don't necessarily have to be, you know, obviously you're, you're competing against yourself all the time, but you know, sometimes you use that in a, in a, an event, but it's this constant, like, trying to improve in all areas, but also in your athletic performance. Can we just drop the mic right there? Like that, that to me was a spectacular answer. I loved that I answer. I stole that from somewhere. I can't remember who, who said that. I think well, it's a bit. I'll be stealing it from you, so. <laughs> okay, feel free. Uh, I have no rights to it. But, but to be a, a student of your own performance. So that fits into the, the pain and discomfort tolerance because could I tolerate this before? Can I tolerate it now? It fits into that longevity or life with, it, with vigor piece because you, you know what you see some of your peers experiencing and you know you're not experiencing that. Those pieces are really important and using that mindset and using kind of what you wrote down, you know, cause I'm sure everybody wrote down something a little different. Um, why was 2020 the best year in terms of being an athlete or an athletic lifestyle? Time to work out. It changed, it changed a lot of people's work lives so that they had some more time to actually devote to that athletic piece. Yeah, I travel 100 days a year. I haven't been on a plane since January, so. It's the good and the bad. There you, you go. Know, yeah, plus yeah, the that, minus. To totally. I was literally just talking to somebody about that. Like, I did two, 200K last year on the plane. And uh, it, it's not so, like, there's a lot of um, physical and mental impact from travel, long distance travel. But there's also a lot of, like, you don't have predictable training blocks. When you're away for a week in a hotel, it's, you can't take your, at least when you're going to Europe or something, you can't take your, your Wahoo kicker with you. Uh, <laughs> makes it really hard. And this, this has made it much more predictable. Um, unfortunately, that's the only thing that's been made more predictable. Right? It's the two hours in the morning or whatever. But so there was something though. So there was, there was a best. No, I mean, I, I got to work with Shane. Like I haven't had time to concentrate on this sort of stuff for a long time. Nice. I, I might be the only one um, feels this way, but I am in heaven. I have had no problems whatsoever. I love solitude. I love the training. The events are just this moment in time that come and go. But if I can just spend hours upon hours and just enjoy the training, I'm fine. And like many of you, I had a serious injury last year. And so I'm just delighted to be able to just have consistency back and just regain who I was. And I can't participate in group rides because I'm in a high risk category. And it's just more time to focus on myself. To be that student of your own performance. <laughs> well, I wasn't joking, I'm stealing that. Yeah, and I'm not sure I wanna go back to life before this because I'm enjoying it so much. I think that's what I struggle with the most. And that, I think that that's going to be a piece where all of us have to start to, to think about what we want to keep, what we want to, to change, what we want to lose, and, and to be brave, you know, and to, to decide what it's going to be like. Because I think what, one of the things we've seen is 
yeah, we don't really know. So we got to, we got to take ownership of what we can and he's forward. Any other bests? I want to be respectful of folks' time too, but I don't want to rush you because I think this is a, it's important to realize that there's some good things that came out of this year. It wasn't all the dumpster fire that's at the front of our heads. All right, where I'm gonna take this next is this. And, and Shane told me, and forgive me, Erica, but Shane told me mostly it would be men on this call. So I decided to use my very best puns. Um, go, looking forward from here, we, we don't have a crystal ball. And we also can't have crystal balls. We can't be fragile, right? We, we have to be looking forward to this future in a way that has some hope for growth and in a way that is inspiring and motivating. And we can't rely on the existence of an event, although we can use what we choose to do to kick ass and take names at said event, should we choose to do that. Or we just continue to, to find our own ways to grow and, and take ownership of the consistency and those pieces in the best way we possibly can looking motivation in the face and, and also dealing with the world around us as well, which can eat up a bit of the stress budget that I was talking about before. You know, and when we're looking forward from here, motivation starts to really come into play. And this is how science or the science of psychology defines motivation as the intensity and the direction of one's efforts. And, and I chose this picture very deliberately because we can go sideways and still be making progress, or we can choose a more direct route and still be making progress. The only times we don't make progress is when our intensity and our direction of focus isn't someplace that is going to help us or is directed at something we don't actually control. And that's when we just start banging our heads against the barriers and, and failing to move forward. And within motivation, it's a bunch of theories, blah, 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 professor, yeah, I can't help myself. But I'm grounded more in this idea of self-determination theory, which looks at motivation through the lens of what we control so our, our autonomy, what do we actually have the power to, to exert our intensity and direction in the way we want to? Our competence, are we getting better at it? Are we staying the same at it, but it's getting easier? Are we getting worse at it and are we losing it? Those things all have an impact on our motivation. If we see progress or if we see skill being built someplace, we are more inspired to continue forward. And for many of us, I think we've always found that in context that is related to others. Where did I place? Where did I rank? Where am I on the Strava segment? Am I fourth on the KOM or am I 12th on the KOM? Where's my buddy, the good rider? Is he near me today? Am I near him today? Those pieces have always been an easy way to define competence and and we need to start thinking about different ways of doing that and, then, and i'll show you something in a second the community piece it's brutal and i don't have a flip or a glib or an easy answer and i'm sorry for that and i wish i did but it has to become something that's intentional for you and Johannes, I know you said Zwift is not the same, and it's not the same, um, but it's what we have. And, and the choice between having nothing and having something becomes a, a feature on that teeter-totter of, am I going to get my butt on the bike or am I not going to get my butt on the bike? And, and that has to start to become something that is as much of a goal-seeking challenge as, 
as some of the, the watts and watts per kilo and skills and those pieces. But that community matters. Who we surround ourselves with matters. Neil, I think it was you who said, you know, that pain and pain tolerance, the, the ability to tolerate discomfort. We seek people who are like us in that way because other folks just don't understand it, <laughs> quite frankly. They want to be comfortable and they want to have ease. And, and what so many of us in that athlete athletic mindset want is challenge and, and to sharpen the sword and to, to find a, a, a way to socially facilitate better in ourselves. It has to become part of how you, how you approach these, these days. Um, and not every day is like, oh, I get to be on, on uh, you know, Zwift with my buddies today. But someday has to be that. Susan, are you saying that uh, uh, we need to, uh, to find a ride buddy if we haven't got one now? If it's something that motivates you and drives you, yeah, it helps. Helps a lot. And it doesn't have to be somebody who can ride just like you. Just having somebody to check in with and, and to tell stories with, that's a big deal. And it doesn't even have to be another cyclist. But having somebody that you can be like, oh my God, oh my God, I was in Watopia and I was on Tempest Fugit and killed it, got the sprint jersey for the first time. You, you, you need someone who's not going to look at you like my husband does, which is, that, 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 that's great. Okay. Okay. That, that piece of things does matter. And someone who understands, oh my God, I hit, you know, I hung in sweet spot for 40 minutes today. Holy crap, you hung in sweet spot for 40 minutes today? Are you insane? How did you do that? You want to have those voices in your world, whether it means setting up a Discord channel or a text or an email chain or just everybody wants contact right now it's real easy to say hey you know what i was listening to this crazy woman talk and she said that having a buddy to talk about this with would be cool you, you want to trade ride stories once a week and just catch up on a call and have some coffee the answer is going to be yes um the piece i didn't yet touch on in this motivation is the idea of care if, and, and Chris, I'm going to guess you experienced this because you took a real brave leap forward into self-care. The two things that will make motivation disappear faster than anything are fatigue, and that can be not enough sleep. It can also be just worn out from the repetitive waves of stress. Finding a way to manage your fatigue has to become a top priority if you want to remain motivated. And then fueling. How you, how you choose to put nutrients into your body has a big impact on motivation. Um, I told Shane earlier, I have had quite the enjoyable week with many stresses. It's, it's one of those weeks where it's like, oh yeah, no, hit me again, so good. Um, and I found myself reaching for cookies, and I love cookies. Cookies are lovely. The entire bag may be a little bit excessive, and it is not going to make me feel good about, it, it's not going to make me feel good, first of all, but it's also not going to make me reinforce the feeling that I'm an athlete. It's also not going to help me manage any of those stresses, and it's also not going to help me manage that fatigue. And, and, you know, none of us is ever going to be a perfect, you know, oh, look at my well-balanced everythings. We have to live a life and it has to fit into our families. But at the same time, that sort of stress relief eating or fueling or under fueling because you're stressed and tired, all of those are going to sap away at your motivation as well. And, and if, if we take one thing going into 2021, it's the understanding that caring for our, our vessel right here, this athlete, has to come before the workouts because the workouts, the training will never be as impactful 
on a broken down, poorly fed, you know, sad sack of a, of a human. And, and it's, it's these features really matter to whether we want to get on that bike or not. There's a lot of things we control. There's a crap ton of things we control. And within them, there are an awful lot of ways to have an impact on an event of interest. And if we improve in any one of these areas, we will show up at whatever event is finally offered to us with a higher performance level than if we simply focus on an event and the demands of that event. Every event, is, performance is determined by what your VO2 is, what your lactate threshold is, and how much of it you can sustain and tolerate. Um, and, and all of these other factors that cost energy, you know, body composition, your structure, do you have any nagging injuries? Not major injuries that are very obvious, like broken femurs, um, but do you have little nagging bits and pieces that hold you back, that cost you energy? Do you, are your skills really good on the bike? Skills cost energy. If you're not good at something, it costs you more. Um, the, the extrinsic stuff, are you a, are you a, a tech nerd? Do you love the, the geeky stuff on the bike? Well, you know what? This is a great time to get better at some of that too. There's, there's an enormous palette that we can work with as we start dreaming about these goals for 2021. It's almost endless because there's always a place where we can go, where we can be like, oh yeah, no, that holds me back. Oh yeah, no, that, that's something, that's an opportunity right there. Having, having a vision full of wishes and hopes, I wish I could, I hope I can. I wonder if changes it from you know, going to the PMC and being able to ride with your crew or going to B to VT and having a higher wattage and faster climb up Leviathan. Those are all very smart goals, but they're not always the smartest goals for times like this when we don't know that those things are going to be there. So what is it that allows you the, the, affordance of doing that thing. Well, if I want to climb faster, I better be able to put out more power and sustain discomfort and keep turning the pedals. Maybe my watts per kilo I need to consider for maybe changing some things on my bike. All of those pieces now become process-oriented goals that we control. And if the event is there, we're better for them. This is kind of how I look at, this is sort of my philosophy. Like if I want to be prepared for opportunities and challenges, I need to consider myself. I need to consider the environment in which I will be competing or potentially competing or interested in performing at and what it is I actually need to do. And, and I mean, obviously I spend more time on triathlon than cycling, but if I'm going to be in a draft pack, I better know how to maintain distance, hold a straight line, drink without wobbling my bike, brake with both hands, all sorts of features that are involved in performing the task that I can work on and that I have opportunities that don't have to be with other people because they can't always. And then thinking about everything in the context of what you know, where do you need to learn more? What do you actually do most of the time? What's your fitness or your ability to sustain it? And then sort of that strategy or that execution, how happy, you know, or how elegant or how soigné are you in that execution? Those are all places where there's opportunities because any place you have a gap, it's a vulnerability. The more places you have gaps, the more vulnerabilities are potentially there. 
the precision solution, choosing one event, and I'm going to do X wattage in X space on X day in X place. Well, there's really only one definition of success in that environment. If we start thinking about what are the needs, the behaviors, the actions that will allow me to be successful, gives you options in how you're defining success for this next coming year. Because this year, I did a crap job at it. Like I, 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 it took me too long to make that shift for myself, for my athletes. Coming to 2021, this becomes really the opportunity of, of, of growing and being better students of our own performance. And there's a lot of options where we can do that. And when those events do come up, I think one of the things that we really have to consider is, is thinking of them like, like Halloween candy. Like, I hope I go to that house and get the full-size Snickers bar. Is that a reference that makes sense to people? Like, but you get to the house and you get the, the, the box of raisins. I'm like, all right, well, great, super. But you still get to go trick-or-treating. And you still had a great costume. And it still was a fun day. And when we do get that full-size Snickers bar, when we do get to go and race and have an event, I, we want to show up with our best selves and, and be able to enjoy the experience of, of tolerating all of the discomfort that comes with it. Um, and, and that's going to be determined by how we use our time in the next few months to come and, and a few months after that. Um, and, and we can keep working the joy side of things and take what's good and keep it. And then look at where we had some responsibilities and where we can make some shifts and own it. And then recognize that all the things that we can't actually control, well, all right, let, let the waves keep crashing and just keep popping up and work the ones that you can. All right, so this is basically teeing you up to start dreaming about what you want to improve, what you want to change, what you want to take ownership of, how you want to drive yourself forward. Because we can't control everybody else, we can't control the events, but, but what are you going to do to define 2021 as successful? How do you want to put those words down? That's where I'm going to leave you. Because <laughs> um, that, that pretty much tees up the dreaming part of dreaming season. And that's really what this has always been. Except for cyclocross season, but okay. Um, we can start to dream now. We can start to plan now. We, we have... We have survived this far, and we have started to understand what survival looks like to continue. And now we got to start living, not just surviving. We got to start bringing a little thrive into this as well. Um, otherwise, we're going to be looking at the end of next year having this same conversation, and that's a miss. That's a missed opportunity I don't want for any of us. Thoughts, questions, comments? Shane? Awesome. 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 Thank you so much. I don't have any thoughts, comments. I thought it was great. I'm going to share this with everybody um, that wasn't able to make it tonight because I think it was very beneficial. But no, I, th I thought it was great. Thank you again. And I want to say thank you to, to all the folks who, who shared their voice. Uh, I know that I'm a stranger and I really, truly appreciate you jumping in because not just for me, and, and it did help me, don't get me wrong. Um, but I hope you saw how it helped your peers here because I think a lot of people needed to hear some things that they heard too. Um, it helps. The, the, the community matters and it seems like you guys got some pretty good people in yours. The best. I want to say thanks to Shane. If this, you got this idea going, it's great. And uh, thanks. Susan. Um, it's a tough year and, and any way that helps us uh, find other ways to be uplifted or more positive, it's worth it. So thanks so much.
Yeah, that was the idea. And we'll keep us going for sure. Susan is a great resource. So we'll definitely continue to use her as a great resource moving forward, um, as well as myself included, just personally. So it's been great. Thank you. All right, cool. So anybody have a closing? We got two minutes and we'll wrap this puppy up. Um, I'm going to put my Zwift uh, username in the chat because uh, I Zwift quite a bit. Um, so if you're looking for, you know, someone to hang with, I, for some reason, love the trainer. Um, it's less stressful at times than going out on the road and being afraid of the cars. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, follow me, join me. I'll be there quite a bit this winter for sure. <laughs> And I'm S underscore Sotir, and our hashtag for our team is Team BPC. And I'm, I'm on there a couple of times a week myself, too. Um, a lot of times I have to get up early or ride late, so I don't want to do that on the road either because I don't want to end up any place other than in my basement. <laughs> Hmm. Keep muting, unmuting. Maybe that's it, unmute him. We lost him. Joe, come back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there he goes. All right, say that again, Joe. Sorry. No, be muted again. The rail trail is great. No cars are at risk. And by now, all you tourists have gone. So the trail is wide open. Stephen can attest to that. Sorry, did you say the rail trail? Yeah. He's on the Cape. Yeah. Oh, on the Cape. Oh, okay. Because we have the Danvers Ranch Rail Trail up here that I was just on over the weekend. Uh, still quite a few people there, but um, we don't have like good stretches of just like gravel around here. It feels like unless somebody has a good route that they want to share with me, but I find it hard to find the easy stuff. Uh, it's in my skill set. Yeah. Thanks, Shane. Thanks, Susan. Of course. All right, guys. Nine o'clock on the dot. Here. So let's wrap it up. Time for bed. I will talk to everybody soon and love to you all. Thank you again, Susan. Oh, thank you so Good much night. for thank having you, me. Thank, thank you, Susan. Thank you all. Bye, everyone. Yeah. See ya.